In this video, we demonstrate the creation of the latest generation intrinsic appliances from Infoblox and the steps for joining an appliance to an existing Infoblox grid. To begin, we navigate to the EC2 page in the AWS console and click on the Launch Instance button. In a Community AMIs panel, run a search for Infoblox, including a version number to reduce results. Note that not all versions are available. Take note of the recommended instance types for each of the three intrinsic model appliances and then select the DVI image. Based on the recommended instance types provided in the image description on the previous screen, select that here and then continue on to configure the instance details. There are two important items that must be configured here. First, make sure that the correct VPC and subnet are selected. The other important item is to add a second network interface. This is required as the appliance will fail to start up if this is missing. The user data box in the advanced details section enables you to include directives that you want applied by the appliance during its initial launch. Continuing on, we set the volume type that the appliance will use. SSD storage is faster than magnetic storage and should be used for production or where disk performance is important. Here, set any tags that you want to use, such as name, which will be used for the VM. Once done, move on to the next step to assign an existing security group or create a new one. This is important so that connections to and from the appliance, which should be allowed, will be able to work and other traffic will be blocked. The last step lets you review all of the details for the appliance you're creating, giving you a chance to make any changes that might be needed. After you click on the launch button, assign a key pair if prompted. Additional warnings may also appear, including that the appliance is no longer eligible for the free usage tier or about the volume type if magnetic storage was selected. The appliance is now being created. Back on the Instances panel, you can track the progress of this by following the status checks and instance date. Once both checks complete, you'll know if the appliance has been created and successfully started. To verify the appliance status, it is useful to view an instance screenshot. This allows you to see an image showing the output of what is typically redirected to the appliance's serial console. Alternatively, you can also view the system log from the appliance. However, the data displayed here is not frequently updated, even when using the refresh button. For the two network interfaces attached to the appliance, ETH1 is used for the LAN1 interface. If ICMP is allowed, ping can be used to verify that it is reachable. Once the appliance is finished starting and we have verified that it is accessible, you can connect to its CLI using an SSH client. If temporary license keys were also installed as part of its launch configuration, the Grid Manager GUI should also be reachable already. If licenses were not installed as part of the launch configuration, you will need to connect to its CLI and install the licenses before being able to use the appliance. A NIOS license is required for the appliance to start, and a grid license is required if the appliance will be part of the grid. After installing the NIOS license, the appliance will restart without notice, ending your CLI session in the process. Switching to the Grid Manager GUI for an existing Infoblox grid, we add our new appliance as a grid member. Be sure to set the member type to Virtual NIOS, enter in the name that you want to use for your new appliance, and set the network settings. These network settings should match those being used by your appliance so that it will continue to work properly after joining the grid. After defining the grid member configuration for your new appliance, we connect back to its CLI and verify its status. Next, we use the set membership command to begin the join process. This will require the IP address of the grid master, the name of the grid that you're joining, and a shared secret. Once the join process begins, the CLI session will close and the appliance will attempt to connect to the grid master. The appliance will download and install the NIOS software if necessary, and after that, it synchronizes its copy of the database. Multiple restarts can be expected while this takes place, and all of this is done automatically and behind the scenes. Once the appliance is finished joining the grid, it is ready to be configured for use. Viewing the properties for the new appliance, we can see that it can be enabled as a grid master candidate if desired. By default, services are generally not started. If the appliance will provide DNS services, one of the first things you want to do is go in and start the DNS service. When using Infoblox for authoritative DNS services, the Name Server Groups feature can make it easier to manage your zones. Here, we edit an existing Name Server Group and assign our new appliance as a grid secondary name server. Multiple primary name servers and external name servers can also be assigned. This lets you make changes to multiple zones in one place and then have those changes take effect with the simple service restart. To demonstrate, here is a zone with the name server group assigned to it. We can also see the NS and glue record which were automatically created for the appliance when it was assigned to the name server group. Switching to a command prompt, we run a DNS query tool, in this case NSLOOKUP, and send a query to the appliance for its name. 
This highlights that the appliance is replicating data from the grid and that DNS is up and running.